Are you curious about what it's like to be a public speaker in medicine, to speak at these different state and national conferences or these big CME conferences? And how does somebody even get those opportunities? Well, today I'm gonna to talk to a PA. Her name is Jennifer Carlquist. She works in cardiology and also in the ER. She has her own business teaching EKG courses called Cardiology Made Easy. And she has had the opportunity to speak at many different levels and on stages all across the country. Stay tuned to find out her words of wisdom on what it takes to become a speaker and how you find these opportunities. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. Tell us a little bit, first of all, what kind of speaking engagements have you done? So I've actually spoken nationally with AAPA, um, North Carolina Association of PAs. I've done the Georgia Association of PAs, Skin, Bones, Hearts, Private Parts, the California Association of PAs, Washington Association of PAs. And I'm also speaking at NPACE in November and also I believe in August. So state level and national level, and it's it's all been so much fun. What are some of the reasons that people may want to become a speaker? I think it's a great opportunity to give back to our profession. And, you know, I think it's one thing when you're first starting out, learning the ropes and, you know, nailing the medicine, nailing how to document, nailing how to keep up on your charting. But once you get past that, that's when you start thinking about things like taking students, about being active politically, in the PA profession, but also about becoming a leader and advocate and also giving back. So being a speaker is definitely one way to do that. It's also very rewarding because you get to go all over the country and, and meet different people. And so it's good from a networking standpoint as well. And I also, I know I interviewed somebody who became um, an MSL, I always have to think, medical science liaison. And she said that that to get those kind of jobs, to become a rep for something or to move into kind of some kind of specialty area, that people want to see that you're kind of deemed an expert, expert, so to say, in the, the field or that you stand out from other people, even if you're trying for like a really highly competitive job in a particular specialty. So this is one way, too, that people can distinguish themselves and, and show that they are knowledgeable on the topic. Correct. But I also wrote some articles for our journals. That, that helped. And then you can tout that when you're introducing yourself. But, you know, in addition to having degrees and, and, you know, experience under your belt, I think it's the way you present yourself that matters. And also that you can command the stage and, and not in an egotistical way, but in a way of demonstrating with your presence that you're confident, but also that your, your audience can feel confident in what you're saying. Speaking publicly does not come naturally to a lot of people. <laughs> in fact, I think it's like, isn't it the top phobia? If I, if I remember reading that statistic somewhere, if it's not the top, it's up there, public speaking. How did you prepare to become a public speaker? And what would you suggest that people could do to, to up those skills? There was something that I didn't know in the beginning, but I know now that will help somebody cut through years of fear. The one thing that is critical is that the people that are coming to listen to your not talk are not judging you. They're there to learn the material and it's about them, not you. You're just <laughs> a conduit. And once you realize that, it's not as scary anymore. You're just the thing that's gonna deliver the info to them. And so that takes a, a huge weight out of your shoulders. And you're like, okay, okay. It's not about me. It's about them. It's about getting them a transformation. When you're thinking about serving, you can't be afraid. That's an, that's an excellent point. It's, it's so true. As you said, speaking, there's so many rewarding things that you get back from it. But I know people like me have been curious, do you get paid to speak at these conventions? Is this something that people could kind of develop into a side business? Or is it is it all just pretty much altruistic giving back to the, the profession? No, it definitely is, is a business. And so a lot of conferences pay you a flat hourly rate, and that includes your prep. Some of them will also pay you your, your travel. So they'll usually put you up the night before and the night of the lecture that you're going to be delivering if it's live. Um, they pay your airfare, so that's hotel airfare, and they usually give you a daily stipend for food if they're a big conference. And as long as you save the receipts, it's all reimbursed. So the great thing and the perk and why people may wanna do this is because you can have a very effective tax write-off strategy if you plan your family's vacations 
around <laughs> the speaking. So that's what I did last year. I had nine in-person, actually 10 in-person conferences last year. So I paid myself for my husband to come, but then we ended up staying, you know, day after and day before. And, you know, the days when we were, I was teaching, it was, it was a write-off. So yeah. that's a huge perk. And I know a lot of people do that. Yeah. And also, I assume that you can attend the rest of the conference when you're there. That's the other thing. They, a lot of times they'll give you the conference rate. They'll waive that for you. So then you can also get CE. So it does turn out to be very cost effective, especially when you're teaching for someone like AAPA, yeah. but, but all different levels of conferences offer different compensation. You know, one, one thing I wanted to share with people, if they wanted to get into it, kind of the story of how I got into it. So what I did was on my state level, I ended up going to the educational, it's called California Association of PAs, to their educational component of their state. And I said, hey, I've been to your conferences. They're great. I love them. Is there any way I could volunteer on a committee and be and help out? So they said, yeah, come on, come and help us. We'll, we'll, you know, they can try me out. I can try them out. I did something menial, like man the door for a workshop or something. And then I became, uh, you know, conversational with a lot of the people at the conference. Right. And I made it very known. Hey, I'm, I'm very interested in getting more involved and eventually speaking. So one day after I think three years of, you know, doing the menial tasks and, and also contributing to what I thought should be in the program, you know, on the educational co component, uh, one day they said, oh, and they gave me like two minutes notice. They said, we need you to introduce the next speaker. There was 300 people in the audience at least. And I was like, okay, it's now or never. And pull on my big girl. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I'm going to show them I can do this. So I ended up really quickly reviewing the speaker's bio and I, I got the microphone in my hand and I remember I could feel my heart pounding. I could feel myself sweating. I thought I was shaking, but I wasn't. My voice was probably a little shaky at the very beginning. And I remember I gave this, it sounded pretty smooth. Wasn't that great, but it sounded pretty smooth. <laughs> and I just put on my, you know, the, the, what is it? The duck that's swimming. You, you don't see his legs like this. You just like see I put that little face on, right? And then they were like, oh, you did such a great job. And I said, oh, thank you so much. I'm really glad you liked it. I'm really interested in speaking someday at this conference. So then they said, okay, we'll give you a shot. You're going to get the worst slot on the worst day. It was like a 7 a.m. slot. Nobody goes to those. They gave me like the worst. And I, I was like, okay, great. Thank you. So they didn't, they weren't losing much, right? So the next time they came, I was prepared, prepared, prepared. And I got up there and I was like, I'm going to do a bang up job. And I ended up getting really, really high marks. And that was the, the, the beginning of the whole story. And they were like, oh, okay, you can come back next time. And then I, I ended up winning favorite speaker at a couple of different conferences out of the whole lineup, which was really, really cool. But the key thing that I just kept thinking was, I'm going to do whatever it takes. So there's two other things I want to share. So to get your foot in the door, find somebody else who speaks for those folks. That's also how I got my break in the East Coast because I didn't know anybody in the East Coast. And I, somebody was lecturing over there and he said, hey, I recommend her. If somebody says that's already speaking and they trust that judgment of that person, that's a good way to get your foot in the door. And then the other thing is when you're presenting your content in a way that you are trying to get them to buy off on it, there's a trick I use and I write my topic suggestions like Cosmopolitan writes their headlines on the front of the magazine. So they have to be catchy because you've got to figure they go through submissions, like especially AAPA, like crazy. They don't want the same old thing. Then they don't want boring. They want something with flair that's going to get their attention. So I will often use things like, you know, five ways to blah, 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 or how to blah, 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 without the blah, blah, blah or making puns on things or making them funny, that gets their attention. And once you can get their attention, that's when you're just, there's downhill from there. It's, it's easy. <laughs> it's like, yeah. great. So is it pretty competitive to get speaking jobs? It, it depends on the market. So I did have to do the lower hanging fruit lectures and I did have to do a couple of them free or very, very low stipend, but I did that to build my resume. Those are, those are easier, like your lower level state conferences. But I, I got to be honest, pretty much everywhere, except a few places that I've spoken were word of mouth, somebody else recommending you. 
so I think an, an AAPA is very competitive to get in to speak there. I don't know how many submissions they have, but I've even been turned down, I think once on one of my lectures from AAPA. Mm. And uh, the guy who speaks, I won't say his name, but he speaks for one of the top of the top of the top was turned down on one of his lectures recently. And I was like, wow. So I think they're very, very, I mean, he's, he's like the, the major leagues of speaking and he got turned down. I was like, okay, I think it's really competitive. Or maybe they're just <laughs> looking for, for a certain thing. He has his own podcast. I'll just say that. So it was yeah. like, they're not, them. They're, they're pretty competitive. <laughs> So uh, it, well, I just was thinking, like, if you had the opportunity, if you wanted to start doing this and wanted to hone kind of your lecture, I would assume um, maybe even trying to speak at PA schools would be helpful. Oh, Is that yeah. actually that, that, that that's a good point. I did do that for my own PA school. In fact, uh, I went back and I told them I was like, hey, I graduated and I want to come back and teach your cardiomyopathy section. And they were like, oh, yeah, cool. Right. And that was a great way to do it. But that that's a really good suggestion. I also would say things like Toastmasters are helpful that if they still have local in-person Toastmasters would be a good way to hone it. Okay. But also if you wanted to start more low level, what you could also do is ask some of your colleagues out to dinner and, and let them let you practice on them. Yeah. And, you know, that's a good way too to get a, an audience that's going to be really truthful with you. Make sure it's not your mom or your sister because they'll just be like, oh, honey, it's great. Yeah, you're the best ever. Yeah. I don't know anything about medicine, but it sounded really super smart. <laughs> I thank you so much for taking this time to tell us about becoming a speaker and kind of the, the pros and cons about it and how you go about doing it. Thank you again, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Michelle. Hopefully that's given you some things to think about and some information on how to get started if public speaking is something you're interested in. There are lots of opportunities open to PAs and NPs, from owning your own business to working in a cool and unusual jobs, or even just working in different specialties. I'll put some links here to videos on my channel that you might find interesting. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. Take care, and I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.